Hello, my dear Fingsters, and uh, welcome to another episode on data types in Solidity Smart Contracts. In this uh, episode, we'll discuss members of address types and type information. These are also our only two topics in this episode or uh, in this article overview. And uh, this time it's very technical, so there won't be too much discussion about uh, what is inside. Uh, I'll just list and shortly explain what you'll see. And uh, of course, you'll be able to find additional details in the article. So members of address type, uh, there are several of them here. I just uh, listed them and uh, I'll shortly explain uh, their format. So for each address, we have uh, uh, an information on uh, balance, on the code of uh, uh, the code that is stored on in the address on the address I'm sorry uh, code hash uh, then uh, th there is one uh, point I'd like to to uh, focus your attention on when we have such format like here balance and then there is a space and uh, a pair of parentheses and a type inside this means this is not a function this means this is a property and this property is of type unsigned integer 256 bytes the same goes for uh, this property code which uh, is of uh, type bytes and it's stored in memory and the same thing is here with code hash we also have one space and uh, its type bytes 32 is inside the parentheses. And uh, on the contrary, we have like for uh, this address payable type, a transfer member function that takes unsigned integer of 256 bits. This is the type and uh, the parameter name is amount so just please pay attention that whenever you see uh, a space between a uh, name and uh, a parenthesis this means we are talking about a property and when there is no space this means we are talking about a function of course you can also uh, recognize most of the functions that have a certain return type like for instance uh, function send of the address payable type uh, returns uh, a boolean type uh, marking the success or a failure of the function execution and then we have a function call uh, delegate call static call however there is also a member function transfer that only takes the amount of uh, uh, the currency to transfer but it doesn't return anything so we cannot always rely on this uh, returns type or a uh, returning type uh, but we should actually just pay attention to existence or non-existence of uh, space or a blank character between uh, parentheses and the name okay and uh, we also have this topic of uh, type information uh, for now only contract interface and integer types are supported but still it's uh, a very useful uh, functionality to have so how it works is uh, we would say uh, we, we would use a type operator and then in parentheses we would give a contract or an interface or an integer and uh, in case of a contract as in uh, these uh, first three cases we could find out a contract name creation code and runtime code and of course for uh, the interface 
or actually for an interface, uh, we can find uh, the interface ID. And finally, for an integer regarding of the integer type, we can find out a minimum and maximum value that uh, this particular type of integer can store. Okay, my dear Fingsters, uh, for uh, specific details, uh, please take a look at the article. Uh, there you will find the explanation for each uh, function, for each property. So this presentation is just as a cheat sheet or a reminder to to let you know what is inside the article and after some time if uh, you'd like to remind yourself without actually looking in the article what is uh, written inside it's at least i find it easier it's uh, easier to just take a peek in the presentation or in this article overview and uh, remind ourselves is this uh, the the particular uh, article subject that uh, we are looking for some time in the future when we wish to remind ourselves what was it about okay my dear fingsters this would be all for uh, this episode thank you for uh, joining me for this uh, article overview thank you for your attention and uh, for learning with me and until uh, the next time take care and bye